The Wahoo System four-dimensional power cycling fitness test looks beyond just your functional threshold power to four different elements of your cycling capacity. It examines what an athlete is capable of across a range of efforts. Specifically, the four elements are, one, your neuromuscular power or your maximum power output over five seconds. Wahoo says this represents a combination of your raw sprint power and your muscular coordination. Number two, your anaerobic capacity or your maximum power output over 60 seconds. Wahoo says this shows your ability to deliver short high intensity efforts as well as your ability to recover from hard efforts. Number three, maximal aerobic power or your maximum power output over five minutes. Wahoo says this shows your upper ceiling for aerobic power production, which is a key predictor of endurance performance. And number four, the old functional threshold power, which is usually calculated as the maximum power you can sustain over a one hour effort, but in this case is calculated over a 20 minute effort, but once you are already fatigued. If you use the Wahoo system platform for regular indoor cycling training, it's recommended that you redo the four DP fitness test every three months to make sure that your target power outputs match your current fitness profile. I performed the 4DP test twice in eight days. It was so much fun. It wasn't fun. It was horrible. It is an evil, evil test that makes you question your sanity and your self-preservation strategies. Overall, it takes just under an hour with the following efforts in order with a warm-up or recovery between each. First, we have two goes at a five-second all-out sprint. Second is the five minute aerobic power section. Third is the 20 minute FTP test. And finally, we have the 60 second anaerobic capacity test. Why would I do this? And why would I do it twice in a week? I have advancing arthritis in both of my hips. And because of this, I've decided to move from the 175 millimeter cranks that I've always used in the past to 160 millimeter cranks, which will make life easier for me on the bike. I need shorter cranks to minimize my hip flexion at the top of the pedal stroke and to reduce my hip pain. In 2018, I attended a cycling science conference in Germany where I met Andre, and I also heard Dr. Jim Martin, PhD, present detailed findings on why using substantially shorter cranks does not diminish performance and actually improves many aspects of cycling performance. Many cyclists find this hard to believe. I need to transition to shorter cranks to minimize my hip pain and I thought I'd test these performance hypotheses for myself to see if I was getting short changed. This is the seventh video that I've made on the theoretical and lived experience performance improvements from using shorter cranks. I'll add the links to all of those videos in the description below if you want to check out the background to all of this. So this month I've done the Wahoo System Full Frontal 4DP Fitness Test on a Friday morning on my specialized tarmac 61 centimeter frame with 160 millimeter cranks. And the following Friday redid the test on my 62 centimeter Amonda that has 175 millimeter cranks still on it. Did I mention how hard this test is? I've tried it seven times in the last three years and I've only finished five of them. It is brutal. The results. Three out of four capacity dimensions showed a superior result with the shorter cranks and the fourth showed no significant difference between the crank lengths. I'll show you the exact results that I achieved and then I'll explain what happened during the two different fitness tests to influence the outcome. Neuromuscular power. With the shorter cranks, I achieved 1,048 watts and with the longer cranks, I achieved 1,017 watts. So there was a 31 watt difference in favor of the shorter cranks, which equates to 3% more power. Anaerobic capacity. With the shorter cranks, I achieved 496 watts. And with the longer cranks, I achieved 500 watts even. So there was a four watt differential or 1% more power with the longer cranks. And I've deemed this as an insignificant result and I'll explain why in a moment. Maximal aerobic power. Using the shorter cranks, I achieved 414 watts across the five minutes. 
and using the longer cranks, I achieved 397 watts. So this was a 17 watt advantage with the shorter cranks, which equates to 4% more power. This really is the keystone element of the 4DP test, and it's the one that I'm most excited about. FTP, functional threshold power. In the ride with the shorter cranks, I got 315 watts. In the ride with the longer cranks, my result was 307 watts. So that's a differential of eight watts or 2.5% more power using the shorter cranks. I'll reiterate my previously stated position that for me, moving from 175 millimeter cranks to 160 millimeter cranks has provided only positive results in terms of pain reduction and performance gains across a spectrum of cycling metrics. Let me dive into the 4DP tests a little deeper so I can give some context to these results. The sprints. There are two sprints done early in the 4DP test when you're fresh. By no stretch of the imagination would I ever class myself as a sprinter. I have no fast twitch muscle fibers in my body. For me, the hardest part of this section was getting the right gear selection so that I could produce something resembling a sprint. On the first test, with the shorter cranks, my two sprint instantaneous peaks were 168 watts at 91 RPM and then 1123 watts at 103 RPM. And then on the second test with the longer cranks, my two sprint peak power figures were 100, sorry, 1023 watts at 90 RPM and then 1063 watts at 83 RPM. Obviously very inconsistent sprinting, however, 31 watts is 31 watts. The five minute aerobic power test. Wahoo says this is the pivotal element of the 4DP test and I would agree that it is the hardest of the four segments. With the shorter cranks in this part of the test, my max heart rate was 184 beats per minute and my average heart rate was 174 beats per minute. A week later, with the longer cranks, my max heart rate was 181 beats per minute and my average heart rate was 171 beats per minute. So, does this mean that I just didn't try as hard on the second test? I will accept that as valid potential criticism. However, I truly believe that both efforts were the best that I had to give on the day. I knew my heart rate was lower on the second effort and I was trying to match the same performance, but I simply ran out of legs. I've heard the suggestion that after my first 4DP test, I would actually get a boost of fitness for the following week, which would suggest that my results with the longer cranks should have been better. I've also heard the converse suggestion that one week is not enough time to recover from the 4DP test, which could explain why my second test results were inferior or to look at it another way, why I couldn't get my heart rate to the same levels. Who knows? The FTP segment. FTP is the performance metric that most cyclists will understand the best. Your maximum power output over one hour. Here, it was calculated over a 20 minute effort when already fatigued. In my first test using the shorter cranks, I had a maximum heart rate of 179 beats per minute and an average heart rate of 173 beats per minute. In the second test, using the longer cranks, I had a maximum heart rate of 177 beats per minute and an average heart rate of 172 beats per minute. Again, was I foxing on the second test? No, I went as hard as I could. The 60 second anaerobic capacity effort. This is the final element of the 4DP test once you're fully trashed. It tests your ability over short and high intensity efforts and also your ability to not give up. With the shorter cranks, I had a max heart rate of 179 beats per minute and an average heart rate of 169 beats per minute. With the longer cranks, I had the same max heart rate of 179, but a higher average heart rate at 171. I should note here that I really did not select my gearing well for the first test with the shorter cranks, and I had several gear changes during that 60 seconds which is probably the main reason why my average heart rate and my power output was lower. Without these several gear changes, I suggest that my result would have been significantly in favor of the shorter cranks. Have I presented a convincing enough argument that shorter cranks offer better performance and that you should consider moving to shorter cranks as well? 
It would be very easy to pick holes in this comparison. I know that this will not stand up to scrutiny through the lens of good research methodology. However, I've conducted several tests across several different videos that proves that I am no worse off using 160 millimeter cranks and probably performing better with them. I'm going to continue with my 160s because I feel more comfortable, I feel faster and I feel stronger. But don't just take my word for it. Check out Tade Pagacha. He's riding on 165mm cranks, seems to be doing okay.